All right. What do you? How do you have your station there? Oh, never mind. Hey, welcome to the best of everything. I am Ruben Paul, and uh, that dark screen that is uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that dark screen uh, is the one and only my brother from another mother, the one and uh -huh. only Mr. Johnny Sanchez. All right, and then watch this. Oh, Eddie Valdez. Boom. What up, Eddie? Eddie just chimed Boom. in. <laughs> did you see how I did that? Yeah. Eddie just said hi. Did you see Eddie saying hello, man? Eddie? No. Okay, but here's the thing. How am I going to see hit, if I'm not on? Hit the comments. The comment. Uh, there, is there a comment tab on the on the, on the the right hand of your screen? Chris. No. There's Chris. chat. There's chat. Yeah, chat. Is that it? There you are, Johnny. Oh, live hey, comments. Hey, Sabrina Wilson. How you Hold doing? A second. Am I still there? Am I still on? Yeah, I can I can see you. But I can't see you. You can't? I see Eddie said there. No, I can't see you. All right, you know what? You just passed on the comments to me. All right. I couldn't see, I can't see you or anything if I see the comments. Got you. Got you. So maybe I gotta stay. Well, you'll just let me know. Eddie oh, just no. said, I didn't prep you enough. And then uh, Chris just said, where's B to help you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, funny. B's on her iPad, actually, doing her own thing. So oh, I good. wanted her in, uh, yeah, in, in, uh, in my uh, home studio, uh, a.k.a. my office, just like uh -huh. uh, the Fonz, Arthur Fonzarelli. I'm in that office. Um, What's hey, up, brother? I'm, How I'm are you, man? I'm uh, doing all right. Uh, it's funny because I realize that I sort of self isolate a lot. Uh, yeah, you know, so you're you know already, what I mean. Yeah, we're, we're kind of loner. Like I do this, I do shows, and I, but I'm not one of those people that's like always at over at Runyon Canyon or at, mm -hmm. you know if B's not around, then I'm not not at the park or something. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah you just doesn't. You just avoid phone calls at home and text messages. That's what you do on your spare time. Um, well, <laughs> no, you know what's interesting? You say that I've been having the, the most conversations lately on the phone. Well, let me just say this. When you, during these times, when you don't answer your phone or your text messages, you yeah. know what I'm saying on the other line, right? Yeah, you're you're going out. You're just going. Screw you! I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, but for, for yeah. me, when you're ghosting me, I'm saying, "What in the hell is Johnny doing? He's in his place right now. I know he is." Well, it's a little <laughs> different because, like yesterday, I came in from getting groceries for B, and then I took off to go pick her up. Yeah. So I'm actually, and I, this morning I spent the first couple hours doing homework with her. So. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I got to help. Wait, 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 wait. You're helping B with homework? That's right. Poor That's B. Right. Yeah. Poor uh, B. Yeah, she got stuck on her capital D's in cursive. Cursive. Uh -huh. I always said I always said cursive when I was growing up. <laughs> oh, anyway. That's, that's when you thought you were Mexican. Oh, hey, man, hey, uh, put it in old English, eh? <laughs> Somebody put it in cursive, homie. Well, well, um, so, Johnny, during this time, you're obviously not able to do any Latino tours. Is there anything you want to tell the promoters out there, like when all this passes? Uh, yeah, but if any of uh, the Latino uh, promoters, <laughs> maybe even agents, maybe maybe even managers, eh? <laughs> but I want to do a tour, homie. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be called the uh, the Corona Vatos, okay? <laughs> and basically, it's gonna be the only thing that can kick the ass of a coronavirus is a puro. Corona Vato Holmes. Oh, what? Eh? Anyway, uh, Eddie Valdez is is interested. He uh, he's already showed a lot of interest. Um, he's kind of getting tired of touring with Russell, so um, <laughs> he's he's looking forward to the Corona Vatos uh, comedy tour. So, as you notice, I got what I call the Corona beard. I'm growing in my Corona. Oh, beard. Oh, you growing? Oh, I can't even tell. 
Yeah, I'm growing in a little Corona beard. Oh, man. I see it now. Okay, all right. I'm just laughing okay. with your clean shaving. Right, so you're, you're, you're. No, you know what? I go, I'll go like three, four days without, and mm -hmm. then I'll have to, sh I have to shave. Okay. Because it starts to get to that itchy phase. Uh, Eddie said he's down. He's he's down for the Latino tour. Man. Hey, Corona Vatos, bro. Corona Vatos, yo. Hey, hey Cor Corona Vatos, locos forever, eh? <laughs> So, Johnny. Um, yeah, what have you been, and what have you been doing since uh, we know I've, I've been a little occupied with B and um, catching up on on TV stuff and like everybody else, I guess. But what have you, uh, what have you been doing? Because uh, Honestly, you don't have, you know, just you and summer and whatever. And you know, I, I just, my whole thing is just adjusting to this whole thing. Cause you don't realize like what a schedule your, your life is on. Like the yeah. things that we have all every day. So when that's broken up, that's kind of, traumatic in a real in a, in a weird way like the first yeah. couple days is fine and then next thing you know you know it's the week and you're like all right what am i doing how do i go about doing this i can't perform stand-up anymore how are we going to do the podcast you know yeah figuring all these things out so then honestly like me and you've talked about like you go through a little bit of depression you know mm, yeah we're not working you know, yeah, like, that's been the yeah, and and you and I were, I know Phil and some people that uh, the Laugh Factory had been doing the live streaming, uh, were having comics go up, but no audience, mm -hmm. um, which is just a little weird, and it's the rhythm and everything is just so. But it did feel good to get on stage, and hold a mic and um, do material. You know what I mean, yeah. like. Um, that felt, I have to admit it, it, it was, it was a, it felt good. I, it was, it was rough and it was tough to, 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 you know, you don't, there's no energy, no, there's no audience. So you, you don't, you're just kind of mowing through everything yeah. the material, but at the same time, there's people who are all over the world that are watching and, you know, some, you know, a lot of them appreciate it, you know what I mean? Uh, to get some, to watch stand-ups do stand-up with no audience. No, and here, here's what's crazy about doing stand-up with no audience. And maybe this will change during this, this Corona time is the fact that, you know, even when you're watching a stand-up clip on YouTube or Netflix or HBO, when you're watching a lot, when you're watching stand-up. Yeah. The audience still influences, the audience that was sure. there watching you in the room influences mm -hmm. the audience that's watching you on TV and that's watching you yeah. in the living room. Yeah. You know, so it's just interesting that that's taken away. The audience at home has to adjust the way of their thinking to really just judge the comedy based on their opinion right then and there. And I don't think audience yeah. really even know that they're being manipulated, but they are because if they weren't, there'd be no need for laugh tracks or anything like right, that. Right, right, right. You know? Exa yeah, 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 yeah. And, and a lot of people don't, you know, well, some do know, some don't, but, you know, there's a lot of tapings that, that you know, that have been done for years and years and years where, you know, they amplify the laughs and the, and the applause as well because there's some lulls in the tapings. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, the, you hear the audience and it makes you at home almost kind of, it's contagious. So mm -hmm. you start laughing and it was, I was like, wow, that crowd's having a great time. So yeah. Um, well, well, how many times Johnny have, have like, you know, we've done shows and it's a paid audience, you know, where they yes. bring in a yeah, paid yeah, audience. Yeah, 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 that yeah, yeah, in itself yeah, yeah. shows you how integral a live, a, a live audience is to stand up yeah. comedy. So now in these right. times to try to figure out how to do stand up on the internet live with no mm -hmm. audience and for a yeah. comedian not to get that that feedback, you know, it's a rhythm thing. Like I went on live um, with Rodney Perry. Shout out Rodney yeah. Perry. Shout out. Whisper out. out. Rodney whisper. Perry. Oh man, whisper. Okay. Anyway, shout out Rodney Perry. And um, he was doing an open mic on his Instagram live. Right. And I just, right. you know, I was watching and all of a sudden Rodney invites me in and I did two minutes on the spot. Um, I kind of did it more like stream of consciousness, uh, monologue type. I just, you know, I didn't, mm -hmm. 
wait for laughs or anything like that. And um, you know, you're you're watching, you know, the the laughing emojis, the tears, you know, people laughing. Yeah. You know, as you're so that's you know, that's kind of cool. But when you're doing it, you're not even really focused on that. You're just kind of just this awkward new thing that we're trying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. You know? I know. It's it's definitely um so did you not it I mean we talked about this, but this is just for people, you know, yeah. listening and, and, and watching. When you did stand up with no audience on the Laugh Factory thing, is this something that you're like, oh, I don't know if I'd ever do this again? Or if I do it again, I know how to do it better now. Well, or, I, well, like yeah, like I was explaining to you, I only you know, there's only there's only about four or five people in the in the, you know, the a couple of the other comics, the camera guy, the managers there. And in a weird way, I was telling you, mm -hmm. I found that I feel like I could actually do it even better if I was just by myself. Yeah. Literally nobody in there. Because yeah. when you're even with four or five people in the room, you're still kind of react. You're still kind of hoping that you're getting laughs. Yeah. Right. Even though they're your friends and they're their comics and they're going to give you some ha ha's and he he's and ho ho's there mm -hmm. and there. I, I actually think it would be much easier if I had a camera right in front of me, full full body, full thing. I maybe not even the mic, just doing it sort of like a one man show kind of thing and yeah. telling stories. I feel like I would do even better because I wouldn't have to worry about the response. I wouldn't have to be man. Whoa! Uh, how come the comics all of a sudden stopped laughing? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if they got it to where they were like, "Hey, you guys can do it from your own place," where they're just gonna they're gonna do like this, like we'll 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 plug you guys in mm -hmm. when it's time. They're gonna get an intro from the Laugh Factory, and then they just go, "Hey, being plugged in right now is Johnny's Edges from his place." Yeah. No, I would prefer that. So let me ask you this, Johnny: Do you think that? I mean, especially now, because we know we're we're at, in Los Angeles, we're shut down minimum through April. Through April. Through minimum. April. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that stand up with no audience is going to become a thing? It seems like it already has become a thing. Do you think? Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm wondering how, how and and how is it going to start advancing? You know what I mean? Or are comics going to start doing something like this where they go, hey, you know what? I need the rant. I need to get it off my chest. Like I said, it felt great to at least do a 25-minute set. And do they start getting, you know, do they start putting a, an, a, an, a, an applause break here and there? And, you know, I told you I did that. I, I got to downloaded two apps. Mm -hmm. And every now and then I used an audience lab. I, I gave myself some booze every now and then. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, when I was going to do, you know, your favorite, you know, black material that I do, you know what I'm saying? And then when I was getting ready to do that, I put, I hit the, oh, button. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So maybe it advances. Maybe in, in summer to by June or something or summer, midsummer, people can do them and nobody cares that they're using laugh tracks and audience breaks. Yeah. Uh, I mean. A, a friend of mine just chimed in. Uh, Khalil, what up, boy? Um, said, I think it's super important for comedians to find a way to engage people during this time. Laughter can help lighten the load and alleviate <coughs> some stress. Comedy sketches, voiceovers with visual background, mm. music with DJ cuts. I strongly believe it can be huge right now. Absolutely, man. Uh, yeah, that's great. That's Yeah, and, and yes, voiceover stuff, that's another great, you know, taking, recording stuff, doing voices over it, or even something animated or whatever, but um, yeah, that's, I mean, the more video sketches, quicker sketches, I mean, yeah. or you could take your, you could take your stand up and you can make sketches out of some of your own stand up bits. But, but here's, here's what's crazy and what was awesome and, and, and what's going to force people to use creativity is with the social distancing, like doing sketches, you know what I mean? You got to find yeah. creative ways to do sketches because, you know, yeah. you know, if me and you want to shoot something, you know, can we even be, mm -hmm. you know, in the in a, but, but one thing, yeah. absolutely, uh, Khalil, um, one thing that I'm committed to, though, is figuring it out. You know, I, I know 
you know, in this space, we have to work. It's like a... It's like uh, uh, when you watch that show Chopped and they give you ingredients and they say, make a meal with it. Like here's a, a half can of tuna. Here's oh, a, right, you know, here's, right. here's an orange and here's some bread. Make a meal out of it. You make a meal. So right now we have to figure out how to create comedy, how to be funny, how to do what we've been doing for the mm-hmm. last 20 years, but now in a new medium, in a new format and really not holding ourselves to the same standards because the standards have changed, you know? Well, you know, a buddy of mine, uh, we, we did the last season of, of mad together, uh, Eric price mm-hmm. and Eric's hilarious, um, with sketches and stuff, but he's also teaches improv at either groundlings or second city. He used to teach there for quite a while. Mm-hmm. So he did some, he did something like a week or so ago where he was like, Hey guys, give me a, a, a character's name. Give me a name of a person, their occupation, and uh, something about them, like if they're passive aggressive or mm-hmm. if they're, you know, whatever. Dude, he was he was knocking off like he did probably twenty different characters in in a couple of days. Yeah, and he just did, and they were all short and quick, so that he was only on for each one was on for maybe 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, you know this this guy who's from. New York and he's, but he's aggressive and he's working at Starbucks or something, whatever. Yeah. And he did those dude. And you know, he thanked everybody for chiming in. People were giving him a lot of material to work with because he's an improv guy. Yeah. So that, I thought that was a great example of somebody utilizing, you know, what he, well, that's his strength. That's like what he, that's what he does really, really well. Yeah. You know? So I, I think there's an adjustment period. Hey, Canteen Floss. What's up? That's my cousin. Yeah. Old video. Oh, right. Oh, you can, you can see the comments. No, I'm. You know what I'm doing? Uh-huh. I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm just no, flipping over cool. and then I'm going back. Dope, 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 dope. Um, yeah. I I just think there's, as me and you know, there's some comedians that are like, no way am I doing any type of stand up <laughs> with no audience. Like, it's not even an option. And and to be honest with you, the first week I did feel like that, you know, and then My, like. Say that again. I'm sorry. What? Say that again. I said, I said the first week that we were in this quote mm. unquote, this what we're dealing with now, this quarantine yeah. or, or or you know social distancing that that we're in the midst of. That was my attitude at first, like the first week. Like, there's no way I'm going to perform and do stand up. Yeah. No audience. Uh-uh. Right. right. You know what I mean? Right. That was kind of my attitude. And now that we're into like what week three right now, three around week three, yeah. You know, like my mind is starting to change, and like, wh- what? Are, like, if you really think about why do we do stand up comedy, really, to bring joy and laughter, yeah, to people, and and, and um, your your personal point of view on life and and things, Absolutely. And, yeah, right. and. You know, this art form has been what it has been for however many years. And now there's been a drastic change in that. Mm-hmm. Now, could it be yeah. temporary? You know, we, we hope it is, you know, and we will go back to, to you know, normal uh, venues where people can actually come out. Because there's still nothing like live comedy. I don't care how funny. Sure. But it's, it's the new normal for right now. And... Um, so I'm committed to trying to figure out ways to bring entertainment and make it funny um, in an unnatural setting, like doing yeah. that, you know? Yeah. But I mean, you never, you never know, man. There might just be something that we discover and we kind of go, oh, I do enjoy this. I do, um, you Turner, know, and- Turner Sparks says- Yeah, I think, yeah. I think when people do their own acts, uh, from three weeks ago to an empty room, it's pretty cringe. But rants into a camera uh, on where we are now as a world can work almost half podcast style. Um, mm. It, it kind of goes back to what me and Turner, that's, that's a good, good point. But mm. it, it kind of goes back to what me and Johnny were saying earlier. Uh, in essence, Turner, it, it almost, hey, Toby, it almost, um, Depends on the angle of the camera. Uh, when you sit, when I think when the audience can see an empty room is cringeworthy. But if you're just doing mm-hmm. straight to the camera, it is gonna play differently. 
Yeah. By the way, you, you know, that was my one thing that I was trying to get, I was saying with, with the Laugh Factory, there's, they had the camera and then they had the other one, which was on the Instagram, which was on Instagram and it was further away. Yeah. And I was like, hey man, zoom in a little bit so you don't see all those empty chairs. Well, well Jesse, shout out Jesse, um, cousin Jesse. Jesse was saying when he watched it, his only note was get the camera closer. Like being yeah. far back is just awkward. And I think that's kind mm -hmm. of what Turner is leading to. Uh, uh, Khalil has another comment, he goes, uh, the initial reaction change the changeover is tough over the next few months that will change i can clearly see a world where people where people uh log in to a platform and pay to view their favorite comedian you know even at 99 cents per person you can mm -hmm. that's a good point uh that's a good yeah. point um, and, and and isn't it funny that we were we would joke around before all this? I'm talking six months ago mm -hmm. when, as we started noticing that the the shorter and shorter platforms were happening, and Netflix was doing those 15 minute specials and stuff. And I remember doing one time. Well, this was longer. This was about a year ago when I did something. I said, "Going, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a one hour special, but it's gonna be in 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 uh, five minute in increments." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so you got to watch five minutes, and you got to watch five minutes a week later, or whatever. And the funny thing is we were just, we, you, you and I used to joke about, you know, oh, well, we'll just pretty soon people are just going to be doing, doing standup from their, from their, their own place. Mm -hmm. And people just log in. Of course, we were thinking this was years ahead. You yeah. know what I mean? But, um, but look at the iHeart concert that they just have hosted by Elton John and everybody yeah. performed in well, their own place. But that's, that's the advantage music. of music. Yeah. Yes, of course. You know, we listen to music on in, on radios, on you know, our yep. phones, you know, in cars. You don't have to see the actor. It's just yeah. and they you, the, the 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 musician or the singer. They don't need the audience's reaction. You know, no, and and, and it almost worked better because people were like, "Oh my gosh, I'm watching Billie uh, Eilish and her her brother uh, on their couch." Yeah. Like there was, they were go, they were getting in, they were, you know, some were in a studio, their own home studio, but then others were just in their living room or kitchens or whatever. And I think I, some people actually enjoyed that even more, dude, because they were like, whoa, man, we're getting a, you know, we're getting a show from, you know, so-and-so and, and Elton John at his dinner table or whatever he was sitting at. I mean, yeah, it's trippy. You know, people don't, they don't judge it. It's different with music. Uh, and and with comedy, it's a, it's much dip, more difficult to do that sitting in your couch. Yeah, yeah because because we rely so much. It's like it's like a dance. People don't realize it's like a dance between the the, the comedian and the audience. You know, now we mm -hmm. don't let the audience. Well, good comedians don't let the audience dictate to us what we do. But yeah. there is uh, there is a, a relationship that's there between the audience and, and the comedian. And we know based on their laughter, that's one thing that's dope about stand-up. You know how you're doing immediately. Yeah. You don't gotta guess. People, yeah. you go shoot a movie, you have no idea. You, go, you, you and the crew believe that it's funny, you know, or that mm -hmm. well, but you don't know until it's edited and put together. And you go see it in the movie theater, and everybody's like, "Is it a hit? Is it you know?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. this gratification. But with stand up, the one thing that's dope about stand up is you know, in the moment, you know when you're yeah. bombing. You know what I mean? You yeah. know when you got to switch gears. You know when yeah. it's not going well. You're like, "Uh oh!" So now, in this new new era that we're in, we don't have the audience. To let us know, we just gotta believe. Mm -hmm. You know, we just yeah. believe. You know, and it might trust you to, might help you to trust in your material a little bit more. You know what I mean? When you're, yeah. when you're performing, to be like, yo, like it. There's no audience here, because the whole thing with stand up comedy is you should be saying things that you think are funny. You know what I mean? Right. I think yes, it's funny. That's why I'm sharing this with the audience. So. But it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be a challenge to calibrate it to the point where you know how to make those adjustments that we do in the moment to be able to make it play to a broader audience. Um, and, but uh, Kelly said one thing, uh, Toby. 
said one thing that she she said um um I ain't tell me. I, I'm I'm uh, she said I'm so glad everyone is doing music and comedy videos making this stuff bearable and it kind of gets back to the point that I was originally trying to make is taking our egos out of it of sure. wanting the gratification and the response like why are we, why are we really doing stand up is to bring joy to people so if we have to take so if we have to do it by ourselves right right you know we're still yeah. offering a service to people and it's like whether you like it or not you know we're here for you guys we're doing the best that we can understand this is very unnatural but uh we're still going to perform for you under these uh these circumstances mm -hmm. um uh Khalil had another comment he goes oh he he's just saying he has to leave and he goes uh find a way to engage people where they are we absolutely need comedy and i'd argue it's probably the most important form of entertainment we can have right now wow um stan felton comedy is better live yeah. it's the electric vibe from being there that makes it better absolutely stan i think that the day of the mega stadium shows with the tens of thousands of people in the audience might be over but smaller shows with more room for the people to sit apart might become the the norm now. Well, I see what you're saying. Uh, I have a friend who's in the concert business and obviously me and Johnny have friends who do mm -hmm. big stadium shows or arena shows, I should say. And I think um, for the near future, it's going to be, you know, people are gonna still practice social distance even when it's okay. But I think at some point it's just gonna get back to normal you know, of, you know, when, when, when the government and everybody says, Hey, it's safe, you know, this virus is under control. You can't catch it. You can't die. I think it's, you know, it might take a little while, but I think it will get back to the point where people will be okay. Sitting crammed into a room, sitting next to each other, laughing, having a good time. It's almost like people are going to kind of want for that again. Mm -hmm. you know, in a weird way. But, you know, like these uh, doctors and scientists are saying that this could be something that that this could be a uh, a normal thing, not not the lockdowns and everything, but that this is a virus that we that comes around every year in, you know, flu season. Yeah. But, you know, they'll have vaccines and they'll have, all that, you know, it'll definitely be different than what it is now. It's just uh, um, but, but yeah, I mean, it'll be it's weird to just see these. I can't remember what I was watching, but they were showing, you know, concerts and, and, you know, people just cram next to each other. And, you know, I, you, you, you just, we all took that for granted. Of course, nobody would expect this, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, like going to sporting events, Johnny, and you've been to games with me. How many mm. times have you been at a game and, you know, you're high five in the person next to you that yeah. you've never met, you're hugging people yeah. you've never met. Right. And, it's to me. It's it's almost a little sad. You know, one reason I want this thing to pass is because of the internet and social media and everything. As a race, as a human race, it seems like we have less connection with each other. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. And now yeah. with this fucking virus, it's separating us even more. Yeah. You know, not to be able to shake your fans' hands after after a show. Not to be able to give people a hug after, you know, I'm a hug. Mm -hmm. You know what I yeah. mean? So, you know, Johnny, after show sometimes, you know, people come up to you like, you are just so funny. Can I give you a hug? What do we say? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't yeah. I don't think that's a good idea because how people are looking at this pandemic, people are looking at it in different ways. You know, some people still don't think it's as serious as it is, and those people really aren't paying attention. You know, there are some people that are like, ah, oh, fuck it. Like, there's some people who are still going out, like farmers yeah. market in Brentwood uh, last Sunday, I think it was, jammed mm -hmm. back with people. Right. You know? Yeah, and I know, man. People yeah. going to beaches. Um, somebody sent me a message the other day that said people are at Griffith Park, and mm -hmm. they're like, yo, dude, we need to shut this down. Yeah, the, the, you know? I mean, they have to shut the beaches down. They have to, the parks are all... Hiking can't do that. Yeah, that's right. You know. Oh, the golf courses. Just the golf courses the, the other golf day. Courses shut down. You see these dudes, six dudes all golfing together, and they're all next to each other. And you're just thinking, I mean, listen, uh, you know, it's it's it, it it's like the best saying is it's not about you. Yeah. 
yeah. just stop thinking that just because you feel fine and you, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not going to re go over it because everybody's hearing it all the time, but yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, um, although I've been elbowing people for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Because have- even after shows, even after shows, sometimes I really wasn't in the like shaking everybody's hands, man. We do, especially for the last few years, because you know, um, after all my my, especially when I'm on the road, at the end of the show, I will go out to the lobby, you know, whether I'm selling merch or not, and shake hands and take pictures. Like, what's going to happen with picture taking after shows? You know, hey, can I get a photo with you? Can I take a quick picture? Yeah. Now. You know, people hate on celebrities all the time. Like, man, I saw such and such. He didn't want to take a picture with me. Now, you know, if, if you're walking down the street and you see, you know, Idris, if a lady sees Idris mm. Elba. Yeah. It, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm can I, um, sorry. How are they going to take that? Man, I, yeah. I don't think that motherfucker didn't even want to take a picture. You know, a... It's yeah. 2020, man. It's just, it's a different time now. Who yeah. Thought, who thought 2020 was gonna bring us this, bro? Yeah, I just had this conversation with uh, Jennifer the other day. She's like, and I was like, man, this year was looking good. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you know, uh, it just seemed like I don't know. And I was a lot of things happening, and I just, you know, remember I, you and I spoke about this somewhere around January, maybe early February. Mm-hmm. It was like, uh, you know, we're getting ready for that show to do and, and, and back home and all this other stuff. And um, I mean, who would have just seen this? Uh, it's unbelievable. But but we're adjusting. And yeah. that's what that's what people do. That's they just start adjusting to everything. So, you know, this is why we you and I are just thought we'd give it a shot and see what we could do with this yeah. going live like we, you know, have been doing since October. Yeah, you know, we've been live since October. So, um, well, well, so here, here's the thing. So, kind of getting back to, to what this new normal is. Let's just say, even for the next thirty days, are you're still going to come up with new material? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. We're still going to be writing. Yeah. You yeah. know, are you going to try it out online? You know what I mean. Uh right. You know what right. I mean? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, just for you guys listening, I'm going to do something with, with, uh, with Ruby Tuesdays online, um, hopefully by next Tuesday. And I'm still trying to figure out that format, but, um, you know, I'm sure there's a way to still make this feel natural. Um, even if you think of a uh, Bill Burr's podcast, one thing that he he'd always done with this podcast, which I thought was dope was, you know, it's him by himself and then he'd go on yeah. the rants, but he would be just basically you know, throwing out material, things that he wanted to make in the material or talk about and develop and kind of used it, used his podcast that way with his, uh, with his rant. So I think there's something there where kind of like right. in my head, um, well, maybe I shouldn't give this secret away, but I have an idea. Yeah. Of, yeah, it's beautiful. yeah. I have an idea <laughs> of, of how to, um, set up a format for comedians to make it feel less awkward. I think I, mm-hmm. I think I figured that out. You know how you're good with coming up with, uh, with titles and stuff. I think sure. I'm, I'm, I, I think I figured something out. Candy man. What's up my brother? Candy man. Con- congratulations on the chiefs winning the Corona super bowl. <laughs> Nobody cares about that super bowl now, bro. It's all gonna... <laughs> Isn't that crazy? 50 nope, years and then... keep Super Bowl anymore, brother. <laughs> KC Queefs. <laughs> yes, Ashley, you definitely got to uh, turn into Ruby Tuesdays when we bring it back in. Um, and I'm, I'm shooting to do it on this Tuesday. I think this program that we're using the podcast in is... Um... Oh, let us know if there's any hiccups or... I, I, are we stalling? Are, 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 how's the how's the audio? So if you guys catch any glitches, is basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, if you're I catching think, some, you know, uh, most any, of the, most of the comments, Johnny, have been looks great, sounds great. So that's that's encouraging. Chris okay. chimed in, said looks great, sounds great. Um, Turner, 
so it's too it's too soon for me to come up with what up my glitches is it too soon for that i was gonna hashtag that what up my glitches really no? well really? i had that in my back pocket in case we were having a lot of glitches that would have been great wouldn't it yeah yeah <laughs> um uh stan felton said uh uh it looks great it works oh all right and stan you know stan's watched uh every episode of ours you know that right he hasn't missed an episode Listen oh to bro, watch. Bro. thanks stan um matter of fact i'm so i need to i need to reach out to i've been meaning to message him or richard torres because now the olympics got moved and you know my friend uh, Richard Torres, I've told you about his son. The boxer. Was the boxer, yeah. yeah. So now he's got to wait. But, hey, here's what's great. At least they're not canceling it. You know what I mean? Um, I'm sure a lot of these athletes will take a as year. Of, as of now, they're not. You know? Well, as of now, it's July 2021. Steve Byrne. What up, Steve Byrne? What? What up, brother? Um so you know it's July 2021 is the new date, right? Um, shoot, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know that new date. I wonder. Oh, oh, okay. I wonder how Steve, what Steve has been doing. I got to reach out to Steve. I haven't talked to him in a while, Steve's man. Steve's been doing. Um, I he's been posting. Um, what was it? I saw him. Um, uh, a lot of stuff with his crowd work and stuff like that. A lot of those clips. Uh huh. Um, and then I thought he did something else. Wasn't wasn't he doing? Steve, weren't you? I don't know if he's still around, but I thought he was doing something with um, live, some type of live stream or something. Yeah, I'd be, you know, he just chimed in. I don't know if he's still in. He just chimed in and said hello. But I'd be curious to hear, you know, our other comedians' opinions to hear about uh, this no, you know, performing with doing stand up with no audience. How they, yeah, feel about it. you know what I mean. I know how mean you feel about it. Um, Rodney Perry said something interesting, and it, it fits Rodney. Because when Rodney was doing the open mic, he's going like, yo, man, I'm a comedian. I tell jokes. That's what I yeah, do. I don't right. give a about an audience. And that's how he kind of forced me to come into it. He was like, you, sure. a, you just come in and, and be funny for two minutes, man. We've been doing this too long to be afraid to perform with no audience, you know. But mm -hmm. it's just hard because, some like, it goes back to not really caring about other people's opinions or what they think is just believing yeah. what you do, you know? And yeah. everything is not for everybody. You do the best that you can. Some people are going to like it. Some people aren't. And that's just life, you know? Um, but I think yeah. But it was like that. It was like that at, at, at the comedy clubs. Absolutely. But I, I, I mean, what yeah. people don't understand. Yeah. But how about those people do that come there purposely to not laugh or to sit up in front with their arms crossed. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I mean, we couldn't please everybody all the time anyway. I mean, we already knew that. So um, I mean, who knows, man? Maybe this is something that you know how frustrated I get with audiences. So maybe this is it's like, you know, <laughs> I mean, remember because because hey guys, I gotta tell everybody. I know we've talked about this, but like sometimes I would literally get mad at audiences when. Just sometimes it happens and you're on the show with somebody who's doing like very, very typical hacky material that's been done forever and ever with the same outcome and the same delivery and the same, you know, they, they, they didn't even, nothing creative or changed. Yeah. And then the audiences are dying. They're buckled over. And I remember I'd go, remember sometimes I would text you and go, I hate the, I hate these guys already. <laughs> I hate them for not being smart enough, though. This is all really bad rehashed stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe this is perfect for Johnny Sanchez, man. I, you know, it's it's gonna. I, I mean, I'm committed to saying whatever and just dealing with whatever we have to deal with right now. But man, the day when this is over and we're we're able to go back. And perform for live audiences. Mm -hmm. I think it, I, you know, I'm saying this right now, and I hope that's the case. I think it's going to make me appreciate audiences. Oh, oh, totally. You know, completely. And I even, yeah. I've even said when I was doing the day, I was like, I actually miss uh, the the bachelorette party with all of them talking too loud, or 
you know, somebody going ooh and ah, somebody giving us the oohs and ahs from back, you know, ooh's the sensitive person. Ooh's, what's it, Pierre? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Pierre. Ooh's 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 and ahs. Ooh's and ahs. But, you know, when you hear the, the moans and groans from somewhere, some the sensitive people, remember we were starting to get really frustrated with that. And now I'm like, hey, you know what? Bring, that's fine. I, I would love to hear that now. You know what I mean? You know, it's almost like, you know, maybe all this we're going through on a lot of different levels is the world hitting the, re <laughs> the reset button. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just the reset. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything and, and help, helping us like, yo, let's appreciate these things more. Let's take care of the planet. The thing that's, that's interesting that I've noticed, and I don't know if you've noticed this, how clear the skies are in LA. Yeah, right. Now. Yeah. Because there's yeah. not much, you know, mm -hmm. on the road. There's not a lot of smog. There are reports that in China that uh, people were, um, that they've had the best air quality that they've had in years. Yeah, right. Because, man, the, the only thing that I, not the only thing, but, you know, you know I enjoy going to China. But the thing that really uh, used to bother me, the one thing that bothered me about. It was the air, right? Air quality, man. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. over there. I don't know if Turner's in here, but Turner could speak to that. With well, the point of there's certain types of day where kids were allowed to, you know, go outside or have to be, yeah. and they would have these um, these things that measure these. They would mm, yeah. measure the air quality. Quality, where right? Where you can test it, and if it was at a certain number, it's like nah, can't go outside. It has to be within a certain number. Sure. Just to be able to yeah. be living in that, you know, yeah. our air quality hasn't been good here for a long time. So this is good. And, you know, a lot of people think that this is, you know, the earth saying, hey, man, time enough is enough. Yeah. yeah. Time to put you guys on timeout for a little while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and it's also crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's also crazy just uh, how wide open the, the streets and freeways are, man. I mean, it, it is, you literally get to where you need to get in the amount of miles that it's away from you. So if it's 10 miles away, it takes you only 10 minutes to get there. How great. And, and that, I just, we know how that goes. We know how that eight, I mean, eight miles sometimes would, for me to get to my place, to the studio mm -hmm. when we were doing the podcast, there's times it was 45 minutes, almost an hour sometimes, how, eight miles. How great is it to get on the freeway now? It's crazy great. <laughs> crazy and great. Not have to deal <sighs> with that traffic, man. Where you? Well, I was out. I had, I had to run some errands. I had to go to the vet, and I had to go to the store, and normally – you know, living in LA, you try to plan things, like you try to do everything in one oh, area when you're in the area. Yeah. But now to be able to go, oh, I'll go do this, go back home, and then go back out, and then and it's not a big deal. You know, that's yeah. one thing. That's. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm like, wow. So this was like LA in the '50s and '60s. <laughs> that's how they got around back then, dude. You know what I mean? With big giant cars too. You know, they had plenty of room. Uh, so it's been, it, I mean, this has definitely been different and, you know, and like you said, like we were talking about, we just want to, we, we, we've spent three weeks. Cause I think we did the, the last one we did was with Darren on, um, April 4th. I mean, March 4th. Wait, didn't we, we didn't do a show on the 11th, 11th. the 11th. Yeah. That was the last yeah, we did. It was the 11th. Yeah, got, that's, that's right. That's right. That's, that's the day it became a pandemic. That mm -hmm. was the official. That was that's, the official day. that's right. The eleventh. It, it will be the Tuesdays 11th. on the tenth, and then because I went, remember, because I went to Minnesota. Yeah. That Wednesday or, or, or Thursday, and it was interesting doing shows out there, and then yeah. talking to you, figuring out what was going on in uh -huh. LA versus Minnesota. And they ended up canceling my my yep. Sunday show. Sunday show, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So and what? So that was so my official. Well, I, technically, I did stand up yesterday, but my last 
performance in front of a, a live audience was March 14th. You are correct. March and that was mine. I was at uh, Long Beach. Gotcha. Yeah. So then the next day on the Sunday is when they were implementing, hey, you know, I think we're gonna we're gonna stop with the schools. You know, da, 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 all that stuff. They had started talking about that even before the weekend. So yeah, everything changed that week, dude. From the 11th to the 15th, it just it, it all hit the fan. You know what I mean? Now, so let me ask you this question, and we know the immediate answer because me and you have been laughing about it. But do you think now with with what we're dealing with going live and everything, do you think that's going to change trolls at all from commenting? You know. Being no, 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 no. It's almost like they're worse because I, you know, but you no, know, let, me, never... let me finish the point though. Oh, because oh. if it get, what if it gets to a point where, like, like you said, tr tr it's worse because Charles is like, oh shit, I have more of an opportunity. Then what if people are like, you know what, fuck it, then we're not, we're not going to go live. We're not going to do these things. We're not, hmm. we're not going to bring you content. We're not going to do these things. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just throwing that question out there. Might they might yeah, still be big assholes like they've always been, but well, it's just weird because I thought to myself, you know, reading all those. I mean, I told you one in every 15th to 20th comment was a positive, and the others were all negative. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, wow, if these people are like this during times like this, they must really just be at complete assholes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be so negative when, I don't know, maybe there, you know, there's just, I guess there's people out there when the more free time they have, the bigger a dick they become. Yeah. You know? So. Oh, shout, I mean, um, uh, shout out to Ashley. Shout out Eddie. What up, Eddie? Uh, Eddie is, uh, he, he, they listen to the podcast. They're in Minnesota. They want you to come to Minnesota so they can see you live. Oh, these are the ones that are asking me if they're asking you if this it was true about the socks. Yeah, man. Unfortunately, yeah. it is true about the dance. It is, and I found those and I found the socks. No, I finally no, found the socks no, with can't. some cotton and not all spandex. Okay. All we're, right. We're not gonna but, yeah, I'd love I'd love to I'd love to come out there and, and I'd love to meet you guys. That'd be awesome. Uh by the way. But we'll see what you know, we'll see what what the, the fall holds. <laughs> If things, I, I, if things get back to normal in the summer, that'd be fantastic. But I, I'm counting on fall. You know what I mean? Okay. I have Hopefully. a I have a question for uh, the people that are that that are in this or are, are listening to this. Uh, my question is this, and this I guess only applies to people that actually go out and support live comedy. Once this is over, are you guys looking forward? to coming back to comedy clubs and enjoying live comedy? Or will you be hesitant to come out and watch live comedy once it's, um, once it's, once we're, we're past this pandemic? I'm just really curious to how people are feeling. Cause there's some people that think that even when it's over, people aren't gonna be coming out uh, because of fear and financial reasons. But if we're doing, hey, here's some free tickets to come to a show, are people going to be, are you guys going to be less likely to come out? Or are you guys going to be back to business as usual? I just kind of want to hear from the fans and, and hear what people are thinking. My hope is that once, you know, the doctors and scientists say it's okay to, you know, go, go back to life the way that it was, that people will, you know, go back to live entertainment. You know, go, can, you know are people going to go back to bars? You know, mm -hmm. what are those industries going to be like, you know, once this is over? Are people going to live in fear? Are people going to trust the, you know, and go, hey, man, uh, they said it's cool to go out. I'm, you know, I'm going back to living my life. I'm going back to the, you know, to my favorite restaurants. I'm going back to yeah. bars. I'm going back to my favorite comedy clubs, you know, whatever. Well, well Ashley said she's going to go. No matter no matter what, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She goes. So, but you know what? You, you, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. yeah, I read it. Yeah, but no. Can I just say this too? I'm wondering though, on the positive side of every fall, when when we do start to have 
a flu season, just a regular flu, just flu season, just like normal. I'm just talking about normal. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling there might be people who are going to stick with being better when they're sick and covering their face with a mask or uh, having hand sanitizer with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might be a good, like the flu seasons may become way better after all this. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jacqueline, um, they're in New Zealand. Goes, I'm from New Zealand and I plan to come back to LA as soon as we can. Wow. I, you know, I just think as we're seeing on the news and with, with our friends and family, there's people that look at this pandemic in different ways, man. There's some people that are, if you, if you go out the house, you should be wearing a mask. Why the fuck are you? Mm -hmm. Why are you even leaving your house? You should be, you shouldn't even leave your house unless you absolutely have to. And there's other people like, okay, as long as we do the six feet thing, mm -hmm. I'm cool, whatever. Um, yeah. Within uh, uh, somewhere, and you know, somebody just lost it, you know, by somebody being close to them. Like, hey, right. But my neighbor, uh, that he was uh, at, at Gelson's uh, supermarket and somebody was talking to him and he goes like in the middle of the guy's sentence, he goes, hey man, can we uh, practice this six feet thing, dude? Like imagine how off-putting that is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because this yeah. one dude is probably like, man, fuck you. But at the same time, it's like, well, yeah, all right. Like, I don't know you, bro. It's not like you're, you're my, my family member. You're a stranger that's talking to me who probably mm -hmm. doesn't know if they have it or not. You know? Yeah, right. Well, you know what kept happening to me is I kept, uh, and I was like, man, if we were doing shows, I would have talked about it immediately. It's just amazing uh, how many people, you know, the lines outside the grocery stores and the and stuff. I kept getting these dudes, dude, who didn't understand uh, the six feet thing. <laughs> and they're behind me. Dude, and I hope somebody comes up behind you and gives you a bear hug. <laughs> oh, you would go nuts. Oh, I would love that. I would, and I would love that phone call. <laughs> oh, and you, so, so you know what I was doing? This was this was before they were they were they put the tape. So now they have tape, so people can see where they're supposed to be standing. Yes. This is when everybody was was gauging it themselves, and I was like, wow, these people don't know what six feet is. So I get these dudes well, behind me. Technically, you don't know what six feet is either. Okay. I All do. right. I do. Anyway. Oh, my God. All right. So good one. Good one. Touche. Touche. And uh, so what I would do is I would stand wide away from the line, which you know I was probably irritating people in the back. Yeah. Somebody far back was like, why does that guy, why can't that guy just stay single file? Gotcha. Why does that guy have to stand up to this? I was doing it because I kept getting dudes behind me and I didn't want to turn around, dude, and go, uh, excuse me, six feet. Yeah. But now I don't have to do that because they have the tape now. So now you people are, 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 they see their marks. Wait, wait a minute. Are you measuring the tape and making sure it's six feet? Cause I know you, you know, I do have my tape measure that I was <laughs> about to bring with me, but I was like, cause you know, I thought, what if you walked around with, with your tape measure out at six feet? So people had to clear it all the time. Like, oh, you know what I see yeah. you. Doing? What I see you doing is like, um, a manager walking by. Um, that's actually five and a half feet, <laughs> six. Like, all right. No, what I would be the going to the manager going, hey, uh, that guy, like, not even in my own lane. Yeah. But <laughs> I'd rat somebody else out. See that guy over there? That's not six feet. Just let you know. So. Look it up. Look it up. But just so you know, just to let you guys know, because remember, dude, I took drafting in school. I know my measurements. Uh, Philip said, right. I just wear a mask and rubber gloves into every store I go to. I do. People people will stay away. Mm. Good morning, Brahan. Where are you from, Brahan? Yeah. They're just telling. Well, they're now they're saying it's okay. Before they were saying don't. The people who who aren't sick don't need to wear masks because it, unless like the, don't use them, let the people that need them, you have them. But now they're saying, well, even if you have to get a handkerchief, handkerchief wrapped three times, then do it. Yeah. Cause it's, it's now, you know, so listen, we're being told what to and not to do and they keep, and they're changing. So now it is, they're like, if you can, then wear the, wear the gloves, just 
dispose of them in the trash can, please. Not on the ground, not in the, the shopping cart you just emptied, not on the in the parking lot. Just either take them home with you or throw them away in the trash can. Unbelievable. You've seen all the trash, every, uh, rubber gloves everywhere, dude. Look at everybody. Johnny's face is starting to get hot. <laughs> 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 you guys don't know, man. <laughs> Dude has a temper, boy. <laughs> He's a little hey, insane. good morning from good morning from the Philippines. Yeah, you see that? good morning from the yeah, Philippines. Yeah, from the Philippines. Um, I was, oh, I got to vent real quick, man. You, you know how you always vent, so yeah, go ahead. So this social distancing is, you know, it's what we all have to do. But here's my announcement to everybody because I don't want to be an asshole. But um, social distancing counts for my pets also. Don't come um, right. petting my dog. And I know I got mm -hmm. two cute little pugs and people love. And Johnny, I try to take them out. First of all, when I don't really be out anyway, but I literally try to take them out where I'm like, okay, no one is going to be out at 11 p.m. at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. and yeah. dude i'll be out there my dogs aren't even on a leash and then someone will come wait up. what's that there not there is a lease law in california okay i'm right in front of Boy, my who's the problem anyway right, go ahead that's there one of my pet peeves hey get it pardon the pun pet peeves one of my pet uh. Right. Oh, can I finish? Those are your pets. Those are your right. pets. Okay, right. go ahead. Okay, this month. So <laughs> they stay in their area, and then people will be walking down the street where I can see them, you know, a hundred yards away. I can see them. Why don't they just cross the street? Mm -hmm. Go to the other side of the street, and then when you walk by me, come back on the other side of the street. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even go all the way across. I'll just go a little bit into the street and yeah. go around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny? Not only do they not cross the street, they come and pet the dogs. Yeah, they pet the dogs. Yeah. And I know I got to get to this point. I'm just grinding my teeth. I'm not even saying yeah. anything. But I feel like going. I, the the response I really want to make is, hey, man, or hey, lady, don't mm -hmm. touch my dog. Yeah. Because, and I know, you know, you you can't, um, dogs can't, you know, dogs can get it, but it doesn't affect them how it affects them. Right, right, right. right. But right. the fact that they're touching their fur, it could be on their fur. Mm. Now I'm petting them and mm -hmm. now it's on me. So <sighs> this dude touched my dogs, man. And you know what a pain it is to give dogs baths, man. Yeah. I yeah. had to come in and give both my dogs baths just so I could function the rest of the Cause, day. Because that's for you. Now, there might be some people right now listening going, you'll be fine, Rube, don't worry about it. But that's you, you mentally, you're like, I, I've got, I feel like I have to clean them. Exactly. My, my, I, you know, I keep my dogs clean, man. I don't have, you know, my dogs are, are, are house pets. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, in the house. Not like they're in the backyard. They're in the house. So, mm -hmm. you know, I keep, we keep them clean. You know, I got to keep them clean. So I wonder if you just need to wear, make a shirt that, that says, says don't, "Don't touch, don't pet my dog." Don't pet my dogs, man. <laughs> and just, I mean, just point to the shirt. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> have one. You know, you can just get those iron-on letters and make it yourself. Because you don't want to hold a sign that says that. But you could have a shirt that says, and also, um, you know, obey that leash law, though. Obey the leash law. It's not anyway. Yeah, it's, there is. It's not like I have two pet bulls, man. Oh, you know, it's those are it's always those people. Yeah, well, you're right. I know your dogs. They're like yeah. har they are absolutely harmless. Yeah. Um and they and they stay and they stay next to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're they're great dogs. No, yeah, yeah, they really are. Um and here and I don't know, dude. Here's the last thing. Here's the last thing. And maybe this is I need to train them better. But when I see them, when I saw dude coming to pet pet them. I called them away, like to come here, like come back. Yeah. When dogs are getting petted, man, they're like, nah, man. Yeah. Nah, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> <laughs> Just like it, it feels too well. Good, man. 
but you know what, Rue? I will say this much, and and I'm only saying this just because of the the. There's a way that you can control it. Is if you do have them on a leash, I could pull then yeah. yes. And if you see somebody yeah. coming and you realize they're not crossing the street, you yeah. can go ahead and pull the right. You're right. So in a weird way, that puts you in the in the in the position, and you can always just pull them back all the way next to your leg, where you give the people the hint. I don't pet my dogs. Yeah, you you know it's funny you said that. That's what I did last night. I did actually have them on the uh, leash. last night. I did. Not even thinking about that's why I did it. For some reason, I just said, you know what? Let me. Well, I guess I did think it keeps you. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps you in. You're in control of where they're gonna. And if you gotta pull them, and you gotta make it look obvious. You just go like this. Yeah. Hey, you know what's going around, right? Absolutely. You know, you know what's happening, right? Yeah. You know. So, um, all right, man. And then you say this, and then you say this. You know, there's a pandemic, not a pat demic or pet demic. I shouldn't have. Uh, should have left that one alone. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, man. So we we hit an hour, man. Um, all right. Uh, uh, I want to. Can we say hi to B? Can you bring B over, or what's she doing? Can we? Can the? Can oh, the, she's a, she's got her headphones on. She's on her iPad. Oh, okay. She uh, doesn't want to. I asked her. She doesn't want. She's like, no. Nah, she doesn't want to get in on this. I told she doesn't like. You I gotta swear. let me ask her, man. It's, you annoy her, so I I need to. No, it's really weird. It's 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 funny. She's okay with video. Like, I she's not. She's okay with videos, recorded videos that we pre-record, and then I can I can share. But she's got something about th this. Even when we've tried to get her at the other at the studio, and she won't do it. Can I tell I you? I don't what know what that is? that is. Can I tell you what it is? What? You. <laughs> wow, you're probably right. <laughs> it's you. Of course it is. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, but anyway, yeah. It was. It was, it was Thanks for. We, we want to thank everybody, man. It was nice to communicate with. with, yeah. with everybody. I know we. I know we didn't get to answer everybody's comments and whatever, but. We try uh, because we really appreciate it more more than ever before. <laughs> we appreciate people taking the time to comment. Absolutely, know? and we will we will be back uh, doing our show every Wednesday. And guys, we might even do you know multiple times a week. We'll, we're going to talk about it, but you know during these times. I Thanks, Stan. Thanks yeah. for tuning in, Stan. Yeah, I think uh, connecting with everybody is really important. Um, and like you said, we're all in the house, so maybe we'll do multiple shows in a week and, um, be more interactive with you guys, let you guys chime in, might bring some of you guys in, uh, as guests on the show and have you, you on with us. Um, but yeah, we, we are committed to, uh, being there for you guys and trying to entertain you and take your hands off of what is going on right now. So, yeah. So, yeah. so next time we will, it will be a different topic. Yes, we'll talk about. It. Yeah, because <laughs> we did talk about it a lot. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but, but but the topic basically was doing stand up with no audience. Like that's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's yeah. The but then, but then you started going off too much on the on the virus and all that. So, but I was trying to keep it light. But that's all right, and that's for another conversation, anyway, on another man. show. So, oh, uh, what yeah. up, my glitches? What up, my glitches? Uh, anyway, uh, that is the end of our show. Thank you guys for listening. Yeah, thanks That's again. The, this is the best of everything with Ruben or, Paul. Or the worst Kansas. of everything. Or the worst of everything. No, right it's now. not the worst of everything. We got to oh, keep okay. it positive. See how you keep it <laughs> Damn, dude. You're all negative. Right? I told you. I said when, when we're doing during this pandemic, we should we should change the name of the podcast to the worst of everything. It's not the worst of everything. We all right. Keep it positive, all right. man. So that's okay. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Anyway, you know what? I'm going to let you go break the law. I'm going to yeah. let you go break the leash law. Go no. ahead. <laughs> you know what? Why don't you go fumble through some socks? Why don't you do that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we love you guys. All right. Thanks yeah, man. Me. Love you guys. And uh, we will be on for sure, for sure next Wednesday, but we might be on again be before that uh, just to stay connected yeah. to you guys. And, we'll and you might and you might do Ruby Tuesday. Yes, yes. Be looking, for, Ruby Tuesday. be looking for yeah. Ruby Tuesdays live. We're gonna be uh we're in the works of doing that. And we're just gonna make it through this thing together, you guys. So uh thank you for listening. Uh that's the best of everything with Ruben Paul and Johnny. <laughs> just tell a friend, share the podcast. We have old episodes you can listen to that are on um 
Oh, you can catch up on all of them. Yeah. Catch up on all the episodes, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you can find podcasts, you can find the best of everything with Ruben Paul and Johnny Sanchez. Tell a friend, share the podcast. We appreciate you guys. Talk to you later. Out.